the Los Angeles Lakers have been hijacked, and I am all for it. This is the Los Angeles LeBrons. I'm here to break down what's going on and how LeBron has single-handedly taken over an organization, and not just any organization, a legacy brand, like a a really established team in NBA history. And he's showing players how you can do it on any franchise, but especially the biggest one. It does not matter who it is. One, LeBron knows how to put asses in the seat. So it's called the LeBron effect. People come to the games, they sell out. But now you got that extra added, yeah, I got my son with me. We're going to have all kind of pictures. Can you imagine the Staples Center or the Crypto Center, the night that it's opening night, you're going to have LeBron and Bronny there ready to to be father and son, which has never happened in the NBA before. So, yeah, let's just recap. Of course, number one, LeBron and Bronny are now going to be teammates. Everybody knows that he's gotten the Lakers to draft him. But before then, he got the Lakers to hire a podcast mate in J.J. Redick, a person who has never coached before on any serious level, being able to jump the line and get to head coach for the NBA. Now, that's happened a little bit before you look at Jason Kidd. I understand people want to say you can look at Mark Jackson. I get that. But with Jason Kidd, uh, he went to, uh, I believe it was the Milwaukee Bucks or the Brooklyn Nets, either one. Those aren't necessarily top-end legacy teams. You look at Mark Jackson, he went to the Golden State Warriors without any kind of, of coaching pedigree. He just went on ahead and got that coaching gig. I get that. Golden State Warriors. Some people point to Pat uh, Riley, who was a basically an announcer, an analyst, before he decided to become the Los Angeles Lakers head coach. But one thing Winning Time did uh, really – I guess lay out for everyone. It was a progression and it was a, a time of desperation with how Pat Riley got his job. He ended up being a former player, knowing Jerry West, getting on the assistant coaching staff and went through a, a year or two before he was actually in a place where he was named the head coach. So it wasn't the same path as JJ Reddick, even though he may look like Pat Riley. So, what did LeBron do? He said, cool, JJ, what are we going to do? We're going to make a podcast called Mind the Game. It's going to be five or six episodes. You're going to draw up the plays, draw up the things I like you to do, and show Genie Bus what I want you to do. So it is clear from jump that he made them hire JJ Reddick. He had them draft his son, Bronny. And by the way, he said, Dan Hurley, you're going to get the hell up out of here because the Lakers did try to hire Dan Hurley. But if you hear in his interview and, and let me know, uh, you know, that, uh, you know, that that if he was there in L.A., that I'd have his support here that he said, yeah, I got a chance to talk to a few players. I talked to LeBron and LeBron basically said, I might not be there. If you are a coach at UConn coming all the way across the country, would you come and be the Los Angeles Lakers head coach without LeBron being there? The answer is hell no. You want to be set up for success. And if he leaves, a lot of the infrastructure leaves. A lot of the guys that are playing in Los Angeles are because they want to play with LeBron. AD is playing because he wants to play with LeBron. Yeah, you can try to give him money, but there's no way he would resign because there's no guarantee he would resign because what? He's a clutch client. So Rich Paul is up there calling teams saying, you draft Brown, he's going to Australia. He's up there doing things on behalf of LeBron. And I don't like the whole, this is the only thing I don't like, the whole plausible deniability. I never talked to J.J. Redick, and I don't talk to the franchise about head coaching moves. Of course you don't. You got Rich Paul to do that. That's that's his job. And, and other people in the media to say this is all these things and how they need to happen. All right? So, one, I want to say a big shout-out to LeBron because he's shown people how to do these things, not – only how to be a role model off the court, but how you can leverage and take over franchises on the court like no other. This is something I will say Michael Jordan couldn't do because at the end of his tenure, you seen the last dance, he wanted to keep the team together. For whatever reason, the owner was like, the payroll's too damn high. No, Phil Jackson's up out of here. I'm okay with that. Scottie Pippen, we're not going to resign him. And the team is just essentially broken up and Michael had no other option but to retire. And that, that's what happened. If he had the same 
what do you call it, advantage and hijack a franchise like LeBron's doing the Lakers, the Bulls would have went on for another year or two, for sure. I believe that in my heart. Maybe he would have played with Marcus Jordan uh, whenever he came out. So I think a lot of it is a, is a credit to LeBron, no matter what. He put in so much hard work. He's allowed his son to be drafted with him in the Los Angeles Lakers. And so many people would have wanted to have that opportunity. You look at the Currys. I mean, if Dale Curry had played long enough, he would have loved to have played with his son. So this isn't the first father-son duo. You look at Klay Thompson. He might even end up on the Lakers now with his dad announcing the games, who was a, a longtime Laker as well. So this is this is what it's about. It's about seeing your kids, setting them up for success, and – having a nice landing spot transition spot while you get it now the thing i want y'all to keep uh pay attention to is what's going to happen with bryce i know bryce said ah, i don't know he might be too old he might be too old as i don't want to play until i'm 42 but you never know let me know what y'all think in the comments below we really appreciate you all heritage sports i ain't gonna lie that's od hey, wait I'm waiting until I nah, that's too much. That's, I'm gonna slide. I'm gonna slide soon, Mark. I'm gonna slide. What? Well, what they say, B? They yeah, they said, um, I think my dad gonna still be in the league when I get drafted. That's too much. No, no, because look, look bro, you wait thirty nine. That's not that long. If you go one and done, that's he's gonna be forty two, bro.